a few days ago, React team released a new React version that, among other changes, contains Suspense for data fetching. In this video, we're going to take a look at this API and see how does it work. My name is Maxim, and I make programming tutorials to make it easier for you to learn coding. So if it's relevant for you, then definitely subscribe, press like button, and let's go. Let's say we have an application that loads data from two endpoints. In our case, it's uh, Pokemon data and uh, areas where you can meet it. Let's look at the code. With a regular approach, this is how you would do it. You would have some state to store your Pokemon data. Then you would have some use effect or component did mount call where you would actually perform fetch. And when you get the data, before you fetch data, you show preloader. And after you got it, you start showing the layout. We also have another component here, Pokemon Encounters. With regular approach, it's only going to be rendered after we get Pokemon data, even though we have separate endpoint to get Pokemon Encounters. In other words, flow looks like this. First, we start fetching data. We wait until we get it. Then we render the data. And only then we can start fetching data for another component. Let's see how Suspense can fix it. With Suspense, we will get both resources fetched simultaneously. Let's see how it's done. When you use Suspense, you need to use fallbacks for your calls. So first we will use Suspense for our Pokemon Details call. Our Pokemon Details component also looks differently now. We use Pokemon Resource Read call. And if it succeeds, we just render its data. What's that resource thing? We created it from fetch Pokemon Promise using special function that creates specifically formatted object. Wrap Promise is an implementation of the protocol Suspense is going to use for data fetching. It needs to return different values depending on the status. If status is pending, then we throw Suspender, which is our promise that we're wrapping here. If it's an error, then we throw this error as a result. Or if it's success, then we return the result. In the future, we probably won't have to think about this implementation because it will be provided by some library like Relay. So what actually happens when you use Suspense approach? First, when you try to render Pokemon details, it performs the call to the function read. First, the promise is not resolved, so it will throw Suspender, which is our promise. At this point, React doesn't stop rendering and continues down the tree. It sees another Suspense block and tries to render encounter list. Next, in encounter list, it also tries to call the read function. And it also fails, because we still have promise pending. So what is so special about this Suspense API? The thing is that it doesn't stop rendering. When it hits the component that uses Suspense API and it tries to fetch data using this data fetching protocol, instead of just preventing the whole tree from rendering, it actually just suspends this component and continues down the tree. Then, when it hits another component and tries to render it as well, First it has to fetch the data, it fails, and only then it starts to fall back to Suspense fallbacks. We could also try to put these components side by side instead of nesting them. Let's try to do this. We will need the fragment to wrap them. Let's try to run our app, and as you can see, they started to render simultaneously. Code for this video will be available on GitHub, you can find link in the description. If you like this video, then press like button and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.